Hi guys, we're going to start talking today about marine algae. So the, the study of marine algae is called phycology. Phyco is, is algae. So if you, if you ever see the, 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 the whoa, wait a minute, hold it, let me back this up. If you ever see phyc, at, is, it means algae. So phycology sounds like psychology, right? But it's phycology is a study of algae. Um, I actually had to take a course in college on phycology with one of the ladies who wrote the book. She she was actually a brilliant lady, Dr. Martine Villalar. But anyway, so algae are a group of organisms. Let's see, why is this not working? Algae are a group of organisms um, that are plant-like, and so most scientists call them plants. The ones that we've been talking about, the single-celled algaes, are the diatoms, the dinoflagellates, were the two that we kind of really pushed a bit on. There are some others. Um, those are single-celled algaes. We're talking now about the multicellular, um, the, the ones you can see, which makes them macroscopic algaes. They're a little more complex than the unicellular algaes. Some people refer to them as seaweeds. I don't like that term. It's just me. But but I, I do prefer algae. So so they're a little bit more complicated. The reproduction is a little more complex. We're not going to get too too far into that. What I do want you to understand is that is that these algae that we're talking about are all eukaryotic, which means they have a nucleus. And if you want to go a little farther, and membrane bound organelles. Okay? And so that's really important that they're all eukaryotic. The classification of algae is based on structure and, and mainly pigments. So we're going to loosely group algae into three major um, divisions, the, the browns, the greens, and the reds. But we'll get into those in a few minutes. So like I said, most scientists classify the macroalgae as plants. Some call them protists, but more and more are calling them are calling them plants. So, so one of the things that you've already answered that you've already answered, and that I want you to understand is that they don't have roots, they don't have stems, they don't have leaves, they don't have what's called vascular tissues. Vascular means that it has tubes that conduct materials throughout the organism. They don't have tubes. All of their cells exchange material because of their proximity, because they're close to each other. Okay? And that's really it. Um, so algae are non-vascular, which means they don't have tubes going through them. If you think about like a, a, a stalk of celery, you know those, those um, stringy things? Those are tubes that are leading up and down the, the stalk of celery. Um, if, if you think about wood, wood conducts material up through the, the, the trunk of the tree. That's, that's vascular. These guys don't have that. So, um, let me, let me, let me draw some algae and, or a, a typical algae. So a typical algae would be something like laminaria, like laminaria. Laminaria agardii is what we think of as kelp. If you think of the um, the big algae that you can find at Ham and Asset, it kind of looks like um, like a piece of lasagna, right? And if you've ever seen the back end of it, it has these little stringy things that are kind of a little bit hard, okay? And and so here's a, a complete algae macroalgae. This one here is called laminaria. This one happens to be laminaria agardii, but we'll, we'll, we'll get there in a little bit. Here's the thing. The whole body, oh, come on. the whole body 
is called the thallus. Okay, I believe that's in your notes, so you're going to have to write that down. The whole body is called the thallus, and there are three major parts to an algae that I want you to know. The first one is this is called the holdfast. The holdfast does exactly that. It holds the algae fast. It anchors the algae to the rock or to the substrate. Okay. The, there's, again, there's no tubes leading up and down throughout the algae. Okay. So the next piece that you should know is this piece here. This is called the stipe. And the stipe is kind, it, it holds the algae up. Um, if you think about plants, the roots, not only do, do roots conduct water up into the plant, but, but they hold the, the plant in place. And so the holdfast does the, hold, the holding in place. It anchors it. It doesn't conduct any material. The stipe does kind of like the stem. It holds the algae up, but it doesn't conduct material, so it's not a, it's not a stem. Okay? And then this big piece right here, this, this piece here on this algae, is called the blade. The blade is the photosynthetic part of the algae. It's, it's what does most of the photosynthesis. It's a flat, usually a flat surface that, that increases the surface area so that you can get more sunlight and, and it, it does the photosynthesis. The one other piece that I wanted you to kind of be aware of is that sometimes algae have, this one does, doesn't have it, but sometimes algae will have this, this gas, oops, let me, this gas filled bladder and that's called a pneumatocyst. Oh, I don't know if you can read that. Let me, let me. Let me redo that. The pneumatocyst, pneumo means gas, okay? The pneumatocyst is kind of like a, a beach ball that holds the algae up so that it can get the most sunlight. Because if it's laying down at the bottom of the, of the ocean, it, it's harder to get the, the sunlight. But if you're holding it up to the surface, you get more sunlight, it, it's more efficient. Okay, so I'll give you a chance. You should write that down. Pneumatocyst, blade, stipe, hold fast. Those are the, those are the, the key things that you really need to know about algaes and the thallus. Okay? All right. Um, let me. Okay. So we said this the blade increases the surface area to increase the photosynthetic efficiency. Pneumatocysts are gas filled bubbles, bladders, that hold the blade up so that it can get the most sunlight. They're filled with carbon monoxide and oxygen mainly, but, um, you know, so they're kind of waste products, but um, that's what they're filled with, just FYI, pearls of wisdom from Fusco. Okay, so we've said these things too. The stipe supports the blade. The hold fast anchors the algae. In kelps, they're really well developed. In some other ones, they're not as well developed. So <clears throat> there are several, there are three major groups of algaes. The first one is chlorophyta. Sometimes you might see this written as chlorophycophyta. Chlorophycophyta is the same as chlorophyta. They tend to be the green algaes. They're, um, they're typically grass green. Oh, yep. They're typically grass green. Um, 
mainly freshwater and terrestrial, but there are a number of oceanic um, green algae, chlorophyta algae. About 10% of all the algae are marine. <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry, about 10% of all the green algae, uh, of all the algae in the ocean are green algae. So they're, they're still pretty common. Um, the pigments are the same as higher plant plants. If you, if you think about the pigments for <clears throat> grass or trees, the major pigment is chlorophyll. So the major pigment for these green algae is the chlorophyll A and B2. That's why they're typically grass green. There's a couple algae you probably want to know. The first one is Ulva. Ulva lactuca is sea lettuce. Um, it's a green sheet algae. I'll show you um, pictures of it in a few minutes. But if you've ever eaten sushi, uh, the green algae that they wrap around the sushi is actually sea lettuce. It's ulva. What they do is they, they toast it and then they you know they dry it they toast it and then they use it as as um nori to wrap around the 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 sushi um enteromorpha is a is another fairly common green algae it's um a, a, your enteromorph is your intestine so enteromorpha intestinalis is is um, is really named intestines intestines because it's a tube like green algae. I'll show you a picture in a second. So Ulva lactuca sea lettuce looks like this. It's a green sheet. Um, pretty straightforward. Okay. I, I took these pictures uh, a few years ago. I was lucky enough to go to uh, the Isla Shoals. There's a there's an island called Appledore Island and um, it's it's a, a, a marine station for Cornell University, and so I got to go to this this marine station for a week, and I got to take a whole bunch of pictures. We did some algae studies, and so you're looking at some of the pictures that I've taken there. But this is sea lettuce. Enteromorpha looks like this. Enteromorpha intestinalis is also called gutweed for obviously obvious reasons. Um, so enteromorph is your intestines, intestinalis is intestines, gutweed. It's kind of tiny, hangs off rocks, mainly uh, brackish water, but it's around. Spongiomorpha, you don't, you don't have to remember this one at all. I just kind of thought it was a cool looking algae. Um, this one here I took in Rhode Island, actually. This is codium. Codium is actually an invasive species. But it's um, fishermen do not like this. It it grows on shells and will rip them out of the beds if they're if they're like in a clam bed or a scallop bed or an oyster bed. So so um, fishermen don't like it. It's really spongy. Um, if you try to dry this out, it gets kind of funny. But but that's a live codium fragili. Um, this is from the Sea Grant. This is another series of pictures of what it looks like. Um, you can see that it's a spongy, thick green algae that grows on <clears throat> subtitally, so in in the always covered by water. Some of them are not. This one is an interesting um, algae. Uh, this is called Desmorestia. Its its um, common name is acid weed because as it dies, it releases acid into the water and will kill whatever's in the bucket with it. Um, but kind of an interesting green algae. Um, so I think we said this. The next group is the are the brown algae or the phaophyta or phaophycophyta. Um, they tend to be olive green. You know the the Spanish olive, olive green to dark brown. I'll show you some pictures in a minute. Most of them are marine. Most of them are pretty large. Those are the kelps, mainly the kelps. Um, uh, rockweeds, racks. If you've ever been to the to the beach and you see those those things hanging off of the the rocks, that's either fucus or ascophyllum. Those are the the rockweeds and racks. Um, you might have also heard of sargassum. Sargassum is a fairly common uh, brown algae. There's a whole area in the Atlantic Ocean called the Sargasso Sea that's named for sargassum. So I'll show you some pictures of those. We've talked a little bit about laminaria. Um, so let me show you some pictures. Ascophyllum nodosum is this algae, very common. Um, 
it's it's actually an indicator of more calm waters, which is I thought was kind of interesting. A lot of times scientists will use the 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 biota, the organisms live in an area to kind of help understand what the environmental factors are like. This one grows in mainly calmer waters that don't have the the big waves rushing in most of the time. You'll also see this stuff if you've ever been to like a fish store, they put the fish on top of this stuff. But this is Ascophyllum nodosum. Um, fucus looks like this. Fucus vesiculosis. There's a bunch of fucoids, but this is Fucus vesiculosis. And what I do want to highlight here that you can really see well is the let me see what I mean. Is is these air bladders. Okay. They're they hold the algae up in the water. So, um, kind of important. There's, they're also, um, uh, on these particular algae, they're reproductive structures. Okay. Um, here's a closer view. This has, if you notice, this has a, what they call a midrib. Oop, let me, this has what they call a midrib. The midrib is this, is this area right here right in the middle of the algae see that darker area that's because it's thicker that's called a midrib and paired air bladders so see, paired air bladders okay um, so that's fucus vesiculosis there's some more um, ascophyllum uh, alaria I just show you this because I don't have a really good picture of laminaria um, but but it looks a lot like laminaria. It has this really well developed holdfast. It's got the stipe. Here's the blade. And it's it's pretty common. Um, this is laminaria digitatum. Digit is your fingers. So if you look at this, it looks like a, a, a palm with the fingers, right? So each of these blades is coming off of this central area, this palm like area. Okay? That's laminaria digitatum. That's fairly common too. Agarum cribosum is a pretty neat algae. Scientists aren't really sure why all these holes are in it, but these holes are actually, it's not because it's rotten or anything. It's, it's got these holes in it. They think it increases the water flow so that you can exchange gases better, um, which is kind of an interesting hypothesis. This one is really cool. This one is Californian kelp. This is macrocystis. Macrocystis is some of the fastest growing algae. It'll grow up about a foot an hour. So it, it's, it grows really fast. Um, it, it'll reach, it'll reach, uh, I'm sorry. It, yeah, it'll reach lengths of up to 330 feet. So it's huge. It can grow up to two, 20 inches a day, excuse me, up to 20 inches a day. So, um, it it's, grows pretty quickly. You can almost see it grow. Pretty neat. Um, okay. The red algae, the last of the of the macroalgae is Rhodophyta um, or Rhodophycophyta. The red algae are usually red, which is pretty neat. Um, they're mostly marine. They are. They tend to be able to stay in deeper water because they're they're they they of the pigments that they have. The most common ones are porphyra. If you've ever had Chinese hot and sour soup, you, you've probably eaten porphyra. It, it's in there. It's a red kind of chewy stuff. It's pretty good, actually. Um, Chondrus crispus is another red algae that's really common along the shore. I'll show you some pictures in a minute. Um, the French people make a, a dish called blanc mange out of Chondrus crispus. Um, it's like a vanilla pudding. It's actually really, really good. Um, there are also coralline algae, coralline reds um, that incorporate calcium carbonate into their into their cell walls that <clears throat> um, help them to to reduce predation um, so here's chondrus chondrus crispus it's really common um, along the rocks and if you boil it you can get some stuff out of it called carrageenan pretty neat um, this is uh, palmaria 
it's kind of a flat bladed thing here's the the hold fast and these are the blades okay stipe is reduced um mastocarpus looks a little bit like um excuse me looks a little bit like um chondrus crispus um cytosiphon looks kind of like a brown version of enteromorpha intestinalis you don't have to remember these i'm just kind of showing you some different ones this is this is corallina officinalis corallina because it's coralline because it's hard it's got the the calcium carbonate in the tissues in the cell wall it's pretty neat okay so i'm going to stop here next time we talk we'll talk about the economic importance of algaes and we'll get into some more discussions of algaes all right thanks guys i really appreciate it you have a great day